If I could summarize the role of a teacher in one sentence, it would be helping students maximize their own potential. In order to help students maximize that potential, you need their respect, you need them to follow instructions, and you need to be able to work together as a team. In order to do that, you absolutely must have good relationships with your students. Hi there, my name is Mark. I'm a high school math teacher from Australia. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my top five strategies for building awesome relationships with students. I pride myself on having amazing relationships with my students. And honestly, it doesn't matter what kind of student they are. They could be sporty, they could be academic, they could be interested in something completely unrelated to school. And I find that I'm able to connect with them on a deep level, which really helps me help them learn. So quick disclaimer, uh, these tips are universal tips. I've created them with everybody in mind. So it doesn't matter what subject you teach, it doesn't matter how funny you are, it doesn't matter what you look like, it's completely irrelevant. All that matters is that you care for the students and want what's best for them. And if you're watching this video, I already know that that's the case. So let's dive on into tip number one. Now this should go without saying, but tip number one is be kind. It is crazy the amount of teachers that I see who are just straight up mean to children. I mean, we're in the teaching profession. We're the adults in the scenario. We're the adults in the room. I get it. It can be frustrating at times. You can get really annoyed with some students. But at the end of the day, being kind and empathetic to the students is by far the best way to build strong relationships with them. When students see you smile, when students know that you care for them and understand where they're coming from, they're much more likely to open up to you, to respect you, and to listen to your instructions. And that's what you really need to get the best out of students. One piece of advice I hear experienced teachers give newer and beginning teachers is don't smile till Easter or some derivative of that, which I think is terrible advice. I think if you go in trying to be a drill sergeant, you're going to get soldiers who actually hate you and don't like you, whether they follow orders or not. I don't think that's a great way to build relationships with students. I think rather you should set expectations. That's going to be tip number four, and you should follow them very clearly. With that said, Setting expectations and following them in a very clear manner doesn't mean that you have to be mean to children. It means you can still smile, you can still have a lot of fun in the classroom, which I think is really important because if students don't even like coming to your class, there's absolutely no way you're gonna get the best out of them in terms of their learning. Alright, I just want to dive in and say, if you're enjoying the video and you feel like these tips are actionable and you can apply them tomorrow in your class, then make sure you click that like button. It tells the YouTube algorithm that it should send this video to more and more teachers, which is going to grow the community and just overall benefit our students because we're spreading positivity. Alrighty, so tip number two is don't sweat the small stuff. There's heaps that goes on every class of every day. And if you try to pick up on everything, you're going to go out of your mind. Students are constantly doing the wrong thing. It's the nature of being a teenager. I'm sure you can reflect on your teenage years, I know I can, and think of all the dumb things and the wrong things that you did. And a lot of them really were trivial. A lot of them don't matter in the grand scheme of things. If these come up in your classroom, like a student maybe says the wrong thing under their breath, not at anybody, just, you know, they say the wrong thing, maybe just let it slide. If a student rocks up to your class a couple of minutes late, don't make a big deal out of it. Welcome them in the classroom. Maybe have a chat to them later to explain why it's a bit of an issue if they rock up to your class late. But you know, you're not making a big deal out of it. You're not sweating the small stuff. When you do this, it alleviates a lot of the stress and negativity that comes with teaching. And you can get to the part that you enjoy, the pedagogy and the relationships with the students. Now, tip number three goes hand in hand with tip number one of be kind and tip number two of don't sweat the small stuff. Tip number three is find the bright spots. Now I heard about this concept of finding the bright spots in a book called Switch, and I'm gonna put a link to that in the video description. It's a great book about change. But in this context that I wanna talk about is finding the times when the students are doing the right thing. There are plenty of students who are more often than not doing the wrong thing, and yes, it is important to pull them up on doing the wrong thing. But what's equally important is catching them doing the right thing. Because when you catch them doing the right thing and you tell them that you're so proud of them or you're really happy that they're doing the right thing, they're going to remember that way more than every other time that a teacher has roused on them from doing the wrong thing. Continuously looking for these bright spots 
also makes your job so much more positive. I found that when I'm trying to find students doing the right thing, first of all, I can find it very easily, constantly in my classroom, and it also makes me feel good. By constantly looking for these bright spots and acknowledging when students are doing the right thing, what you're doing is building a safe and supportive learning environment. You're telling students that when they do the right thing, you're acknowledging it, and the students feel good about it. They respect you because they recognize that yes, sometimes you rouse on them, but a lot of the time when they're doing the right thing, you're also praising that. They don't think that you're picking on them because you're also picking on them for doing the right thing. And so that when you actually need them to follow an instruction or you need to clarify that what they're doing is the wrong thing, they're much more open and receptive to following that instruction. Okay, so you're being kind. You're not really sweating the small stuff and you're trying to find all the bright spots you can. Sometimes students still do the wrong thing. And this is where tip number four of be very clear with your expectations is so important for building student relationships. By having extremely clear relationships and by extremely clear, I mean you tell the students what the expectations are you have them on the whiteboard at the front of the classroom. You get the students to write it down in the front of their books, right? These expectations are so abundantly clear that as soon as a student uh, does the wrong thing and breaks one of these expectations, you can immediately reference the fact that this is a classroom expectation and you're showing them why they're getting in trouble. One of the biggest complaints students at my school have about other teachers is their inconsistency and their unfairness. Students have a very strong sense of right and wrong and fair and unfair. And one of the most unfair things you can do as a teacher is punish a student for something that they didn't even know they weren't allowed to do. If you are very clear with your expectations, students will know why they're getting in trouble when they get in trouble and they won't resent you for it. They may resent the rules, they may resent the school, but they won't resent you as a person because all you're doing is following a clear set of expectations that were already outlined. Not only that, you're kind, you're not sweating the small stuff and you're finding the times that they're doing the right thing. So when you follow through on these expectations and you, you know, pull them up for doing the wrong thing, they're not going to resent you and you're going to build that relationship even further. And the final thing that is related to the fourth topic here is explicitly teaching why the expectations you've set are really important for the students to follow. Just last week, I had a situation in class where I had two classes merged. My normal class and another class came to join mine. And during the lesson, I turned around and caught one of the other students from the other class that I didn't know very well, throw a ruler at another student. Now, as soon as it happened, I sent the student straight outside. I wanted to give them time to think about what they had done, but I also wanted time to think about how I was gonna to react to the situation as well. Okay, my immediate reaction was get out. And I was very stern about that. The student left immediately. And that probably scared her a little bit, a new teacher. I'm quite, I guess, intimidating the first time you meet me. Uh, I'm not actually, by the way, I'm a very kind and gentle person, but anyway, I digress. I continued with the lesson for a bit and then I went out to uh, see her, how she was going. Now, when I went outside, I could tell that she was, you know, upset and a bit remorseful about what she'd done. Uh, so I didn't go outside and start, you know, tearing her a new one and ripping into her about, how dare you throw a ruler in my classroom, blah, blah, blah. I went out and I said, um, do you know why I sent you out here? And she said, of course I do. I threw a ruler at another kid. And I said, yeah, yeah, you did. But it's not about throwing the ruler. It's about what that could do, right? I talked about how dangerous it could be, right? I talked about how it could take out an eye. And she was very receptive to that. And I did this in a very calm way because there's no point in me yelling at that student right? The, the only thing that that's going to do is cause a, a rift and some friction between us. And I didn't want that. I wanted her to learn from her mistake and I wanted her to actually reflect on her actions, right? And there's going to be cynics out there saying, ah, oh, yeah, she's just, you know, acting sorry so that she can go back into the classroom. But I think that's a really cynical way to view the world and view students. Sometimes students really just need to have time to A, reflect on their actions and B, be taught explicitly what to do. They don't always get it at home. So it's our role as teachers to actually teach them these things. So this is a really long winded way of saying if a student breaks one of your expectations, my expectation there was be safe in the classroom. You must teach them why that is so important. You must help them understand why that expectation is in place and why you have to reprimand or punish them for their actions. This level of empathy shows students that you care. 
you're not actually a teaching robot that sleeps in the staff room and wakes up and enters class at 9 a.m. every morning. You're a real living human being who has been to school themselves, who has made mistakes, and you can understand where they're coming from. By doing all five of these tips, I guarantee you're gonna find yourself having much better relationships with your students and their academic outcomes, their social emotional outcomes, all are going to improve. It's a great way to live your life as a teacher because it makes classrooms so much more positive. This is super important because oftentimes school can be a sea of negativity and finding some bright spots, being kind and encouraging positivity inside your classroom is one way to alleviate that. Alrighty, that's it from me guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like the video. It tells the YouTube algorithm that you did enjoy it and you learned something from it and the algorithm will spread it to more teachers and we can grow our community here. If you've got something to say or you've got a tip that you would like to add, make sure you write it down in the comment section below and click on this video for another YouTube recommendation from my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.